In this code vein build guide, we'll explore just exactly how you make the Judgment Shadow build, which is a two-handed sword DPS build that can kill just about anything in a single stroke, all without being seen. How do you get the most from your weapons, blood veils, and your blood code and gifts? Well, that's exactly what we're going to cover and how they all fit together to create Judgment Shadow. The Judgment Shadow build is a combination of buffs that all stack together to get extraordinary damage in a single swing, killing targets instantly. In addition, it prevents you from being seen, allowing you to take out targets right in front of the face of other enemies without drawing aggro. This build is intended to get you through levels easily and is effective on bosses, just to a lesser degree. There are several two-handed type blood codes in Code Vein, and you won't begin the game with them all. In this section, I'll discuss which blood codes to use while you're working your way to your final destination, Hades. First up is the most obvious one, Fighter. Fighters have B plus scaling and strength and B in dexterity, making them a good choice early on. They also have a decent amount of I core at 16, allowing them to cast more buffs than either Berserker or Atlas. However, you will need gifts from both of these blood codes, so consider using them for a short while to master the gifts needed there. Prometheus. Once you have access to Prometheus, you'll see an increase in just about all your scaling and your I core will increase to 20, which will help with buffing. Mind scaling isn't ideal here because mind will affect nearly every buff you have, but it isn't terrible. Also, it has one of the best stat spreads in the game, so take advantage of it. Hades. Hades has some of the best strength scaling of any blood code, but will not do quite as much damage per swing as Prometheus all said and done. This is because you will not quite be able to meet the mind requirements for Bridge to Glory, which will take about 10% off your per hit number. However, it will allow you to use Flashing Fang so that you can get superb one-shot damage against harder to kill foes. It also means that you have one less buff to worry about, simplifying the build a bit. Blood Veils play a very important role in the effectiveness of gifts. Your Blood Code and Blood Veil work together to determine how strong your buffs are, with your weapon having no impact here. When selecting a Blood Veil, be sure to look for ones that grant a higher overall light gift value, or one that provides decent protection. For endgame, I strongly suggest using the White Vestment, as it will buff your light gift damage quite a bit and has exceptional defense. Noble Silver would be even better, but you won't meet the requirements for it with this setup, unfortunately. For this build, you're going to want to use a two-handed sword of some kind dealing maximum damage with each swing. You'll often be able to one-shot enemies, even harder ones, if you're properly buffed. Zweihander is good early on as it doesn't have great scaling and Prometheus doesn't have amazing strength scaling. You'll eventually want to get Judgment Edge, a weapon that hits very hard and the hardest out of any I've tested, and works well for this build because it takes advantage of Hades' very high strength scaling. Make sure you fortify your weapon with an Atlas Chrome to increase its damage even further. You're already going to be overweight, so it's not an issue. You don't need to worry about speed here, just make sure things die in one hit. Gifts play a vital part of any build, but even more so in a build that relies heavily upon them like this one. There are a number of excellent light gifts, many of which are defensive, however for this build we'll focus primarily on the offensive ones. Gifts initially can only be used with the blood code that they are part of, but as you use them in combat you will master them, and then you can use them with any blood code. They are both passive and active gifts, and I'll cover which are good in both categories for the Judgment Shadow build. You can only have 5 passive gifts equipped at one time and 8 active. Let's begin with the recommended passives first. Survival Instinct. This passive increases your damage if you're under 50% health. It works here because you aren't anticipating being struck. Two-Handed Sword Mastery. This passive will buff your sword's damage, so slot it and use it. Strength Dexterity Up. This passive helps get your scaling up to S and your weapon scales slightly off dexterity as well, so both benefit it. Strength Up. Any other Strength Up passive works to get you all the way up to S plus scaling. Active Gifts. Adrenaline. This will boost your damage per swing modestly for a modest amount of time. It's good early on, but not as great later. Overdrive, a great gift that boosts damage for you and your companion until you are struck. Don't get hit, and you gain extra damage. Blood Sacrifice, you'll need this to stack buffs because this is a very i -core hungry build. Use it when necessary to gain more i -core. Flashing Fang, this gift will give you about 3 times the damage of Blow of Madness, so you want to use this one first if you don't have much i -core. Blow of Madness, does the same thing as Flashing Fang, it's just less effective. Use this earlier on in the game if you can't use Flashing Fang to kill harder enemies. Gift Extension. It increases the duration of your buffs by 50%, and since we use a lot, it comes in handy. Night Fog Veil. This is the gift that brings the whole build together. You won't get it until you defeat Successor of the Throat, so it'll be a while. However, once you get it, this build will be all but complete. Final Tips. Make sure you keep Night Fog Veil up at all times. You can't be seen by enemies that you're not attacking easily with it on, even if you're standing and fighting right in front of them. Be sure to wait for it to recharge before heading into hostile area with more than one enemy, so that you can get the drop on them and not have an oh shit moment when it wears off mid-fight. You'll need to master a ton of gifts to use this build, so start doing this as you make your way to Hades. Either use items to bypass the XP needed or use them and get there quickly, but spend some time to get there either way. 
This build is much more effective with all its parts, and you may struggle otherwise. Even though it seems like this build is an Icor hog, which it is, you gain tons of Icor for smashing enemies in the face unchecked. You should have more than enough to keep your buffs up and still use some skill gifts along the way. Be sure to keep your HP under 50% once you gain the Survival Instinct passive, as this will help boost your damage. Since you shouldn't be getting hit, there is very little risk involved. Lastly, consider using Queen Slayer and Final Glory for boss fights, as this is not a strong point of this build. By doing so, you'll boost your damage even further, and this should help you down bosses much more easily. Also, swap out Survival Instinct for Swift Destruction when doing so. This will boost your damage without having to keep your HP low. Stay tuned for more Code Vein build guides, and be sure to check out our Getting Started guide and our Scaling guide if you have basic questions or confusions about the game.